Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. I'm really not sure why I'm smiling because I really am kind of upset and I'm going to show you why. So it rained a lot yesterday, you guys. And it seems like every time it rains a lot that this happens. So let me come down here and show you because I am so upset. I have been babying these rhinoculuses forever, you guys. And look, look what has happened. I got big footprints in my raised bed. Can you see that? My rhinoculuses have been eaten and pulled up. Let me show you a different view. So look, you guys, do you see they've been pulled up? They've been eaten. There's big footprints here, like right there, right there. I am so, so upset. I'm tired of fighting these deer. I love to see them. I think they're beautiful, but come on you guys, like us gardeners or just even homeowners are sick and tired of everything that we work so hard for getting trashed. So after this video, I'm gonna have to come back and try to replant these little babies just to see if I can save them. I have no idea if I'm gonna get any blooms out of these after pre-sprouting them and babying them and coming down here and putting cloth on this Savannah garden bed when it was below 26 degrees. So I just don't know, like, but anyways, I'm gonna get revenge. And do you know how I'm gonna get revenge? And I'm not gonna do it by deer deterrent because that doesn't seem to work. It works for a little bit, but as soon as it rains and they come after a big rain, they come at nighttime after the rain. And let me show you this other raised bed. So these are my tulip experiments that I had last year, but yeah, they ate the tulip stems. They didn't eat all of them, but they ate some of them and they pulled some up like this one, we pulled it up. So anyways, like, I can't let this happen. What am I gonna do? How can I stop the deer invading my garden, you guys? You can see the trail. Do you see the trail right there? That they go through, that's their path right there. So much that they've made like an indention in the ground. Just to give you a frame of reference, let me zoom. There is Lake Wiley. Do you see the lake back there? It's beautiful, but that is their source of water. So painting, they either come up behind this lake house, like over this way, or they come in front of it from these woods over here. So that is the path of the deer right now. And then they come up, for some reason, down below this hill, there's a lot of nice grass. So they really like to eat that grass. But like I said, that is their source of water. So they're gonna come no matter what. Before I show you, there's all kind of footprints in the garden right here. They ate my daylilies. So I'm not gonna get any blooms from that. And this little volunteer plant over there, they attacked that last night. I think I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm debating. Should I leave it or should I take it away? I don't know. But anyways, I am so upset. Like I can't let them eat my roses this year. They ate my roses last year. They pulled up my tulips over there. Let me show you. So this one right here was pulled up out of the ground. So I'm gonna have to put that one back into the ground. But look at these gorgeous little babies. I want to be able to enjoy them. So yeah, I'm back over here to my raised side bed and I'm going up this side. Last year, do you remember that I was so upset because they ate all my buds off my hydrangeas? So yeah, they've been up here. And let me show you, let me show you something else. Don't you love that? That is from a buck. 
So my son-in-law told me that if it's solid, it's from a buck. And look what else. And if it's pebbles like this, it came from a doe. So yes, I do have herds come back here. Sometimes I'll walk out in the morning or late at night and I'll see six, seven, eight different deer. And a lot of times they'll come from over in that little valley right there too, behind that house. More damage, look. That one. They're just completely pulled up out of the ground. Look, you can see the bulb there. And I know they've been up here on this garden as well, all the way up in my yard, you all. They've come all the way up here because I had a tulip pulled up over here too. Now these tulips aren't budding out yet, but like I said, the little boogers have been up here. And you could see where they nibbled on this foliage right there. And this one was completely out of the ground. And I stuck it back in the ground this morning. All right, so do you see this arbor right there? I need something where my husband can go through. So I'm going to go to Wilson's and me and Don are going to go there. We were planning on going there anyways. I'm going to purchase another arbor like this with the gates. One more and what I'm going to do is place this arbor right there down kind of between those two lollipop Nellie Stevens. So I'm going to have the arch there and then I'm going to get fishing wire and I'm going to show you an example from Dawn's what worked has worked for her at least for a little while. Look, they've been eating my pansies too in my containers. Look, there's none. It's gone. All right, so this is my neighbor Al's fence. So I'm gonna take fishing wire, like rows of three. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna run it over to here where my arbor's gonna be. And then I'm gonna get post and have the post run all the way down and all the way to the side of my garden. And I'm gonna have, like I said, levels of one, two, three. That way if they, if it's a doe and it's something small, it will hit the wire and then a medium and then on top too. So if a six foot deer came and tried to come up the yard, they're not going to see that wire, but it's going to be enough to scare them. So that is going to be my theory. So let's see if it works. So let's head over to Dawn's house and let me show you what she has done. And it's kept the deer out for over a year. So like I said, I need to buy one that's got a gate so we can open the gate right here. And that way Paul can come in and out of the um, backyard too. Look you guys, I got tulips coming up. Looky, looky, look how pretty. Oh my goodness, look how beautiful. So I don't want them to get these tulips either. So they've been kind of deterred from coming up this side yard and their path hasn't been normally to come down my side yard either. So hopefully they'll stay away from that. My white by the gate still blooming. This is my concrete pot that I got at Creekside Nursery during opening day. We're gonna have to plant that up. And then I've got to put all this fertilizer down. Look what I got. Rose tone, plant tone back there, and holly tone. Yay. All right, so let's walk to Dawn's house. I see her. Look, she's on her bucket over there. <laughs> Doing something, weeding maybe. Look at the tulips here in the front. Seems like all, there's a blend of three different tulips here. Yellow, the yellow has popped out and the white and cream hasn't came out yet. Sometimes the deer would go down this side yard, but they're not doing that anymore. So hopefully they won't because I'm not gonna plan on fencing that area in. Maybe I'll buy some deer deterrent to try to keep it away from this area right here, but look how gorgeous you guys. 
Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, I just love it. This blend is so, so pretty and I'll make sure I'll put the name up for you for the blend. I'm sorry, I hear airplanes, I hear mowers. I just cannot get away from it, you guys. My hyacinths are so pretty. You all stay tuned for my March garden tour. It's gonna be beautiful. So there's Ed, Don's husband. Say hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. He's turning off my music so I don't get like dinged. <laughs> nope. So this is her garden that I was telling you about. And this is the post. So it doesn't, I probably, you probably could not even see the fencing if I didn't tell you about it, right? So the green poles are very conspicuous. They're not very noticeable at all. And then, like I said, she's got three tiers of fishing wire. So this is what the post looks like. It's like six feet tall, I think, right? Something like that. I think they're four. Four feet. And then I got, she's got one roll of fishing wire, kind of like at maybe chest level, and then at knee level, and then a little bit below that. So I know the wiring's really hard to see. But so far, it has kept her from, the deer from eating these hydrangeas. So last year, they just put them in, and as soon as they put them in, what, not even a week later, two weeks, they ate all the blooms off yep. of her hydrangeas. And those are, they're pinnacle hydrangea. Dawn, what kind were they? Limelight Prime. Limelight Prime. So, yeah, they've, they ate my pansies, Dawn, in my baskets. <gasps> Pulled up tulips. See, they didn't touch our pansies. No. Nope. But Ed keeps it's Our pansies are his nicest kids. Yeah, that's true. But he keeps But that's that. not true. <laughs> that is not true. He keeps the powder. Well, they don't taste as the, good? I don't the deer powder on them. What do you... See, I guess I haven't been putting anything. Ed, what are you doing over there? I am moving these so that I can put one of those in here. Oh, you already did it. I took them out of the pot. Oh. Was I not supposed to do that? Well, that was a process. I had someone say that they wanted me to video it. Sorry. I can tell you what I did. <laughs> I think they wanted to see you struggle. <laughs> it really wasn't that bad. No? No. All I right. Well, I didn't take my time. I just I, I pulled the pansies that were in there out. I went around the edge with this. Then I went around the edge with a crowbar. Okay. Then I went around the edge with a metal yardstick just to loosen it up all the way down. <laughs> Tipped it on its side, pulled it out. Okay. It wasn't really that bad. All right, let's go take a look at them. So, Miss Dawn, let me pan around here to her. Oh. Hi. There she is. <laughs> she finally talked Ed into removing them because they've been in that pot for a couple years. This. Yeah. No, there was no debate, but <laughs> I said Kim highly recommended that we take these out because they are completely root bound and they are completely root bound there. I didn't think they were going to be as bad. I mean, All right, let's go look. Yeah. I knew they were very root bound because I tried to plant pansies in there in the fall and I struggled to try to dig into the top around the. Um, so this is where. Don and Ed's gonna put the hardy hibiscus and they're moving these pansies, which are so pretty. We love this orange. Let's yeah. go take a look at this. Yeah, this so this is a hardy hibiscus. Don, do you remember what kind they were? Summerific. Summerific. Bright pink flowers Bright pink, with yeah. that deep pink center. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. But so these are the sticks. It's a perennial. These are the sticks that aren't going to come back. So we can like cut these all the way back if you want. They're actually kind of pulling out. Yeah. But we can cut them all the way back. I need to go cut mine too. And I don't know. That's not. No, yeah, that's just that's a little just bit of probably pansies from or violas from yeah. last year that are reseeding. I think. I think violas reseed. Okay. I've only probably. had pansies in there. Pan but okay. Well, the pansies reseed. You can reseed. see this is all roots. Yeah. I could not. I struggled to plant those pansies. And so. she likes to um, plant the outer edge because it's beautiful, right? Like who doesn't want to do that? Right. But you can see it's completely all root bound. Here, look at all the roots down at the bottom. 
of the container. Oh, it's completely. <laughs> That's got to dig a deep hole to put yeah. all these guys in there. So you could see our lovely hard clay here. <laughs> All right, so I just you asked Ed if he's got right, biotone <laughs> to plant these beauties in to give them a yeah, good start in their ground. Plants that were perfectly happy where they were out of their pots and put them in the ground. No, no, they weren't perfectly happy. <laughs> They're rebound. All right, let's go look at the pots. So, by the way, just let's look how gorgeous this garden is. Do you remember when we, when I helped Dawn plant this up? Look at the candy corn spirea. Look at the camellia there. We were hoping that this was going to be red red because the tag said red, but I feel like sometimes, you know, our, the ground makes it a different color. But it ended up being pink, but it's still gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. A little bit of yard art there. So this is going to be really pretty. The whole concept of this garden was to hide this grill right there. So we're in the shade right now, but she's got some butterfly bushes, the punkster blue. She's got some tall yew and Rose of Sharon that's variegated. That's going to be that real light pink color. Oh, Dawn, I forget what this is. Tell me. This is gorgeous. What is it? That is a blue beak yucca. A yucca. Blue it's blue beak. Is that blue what you said? Yucca. Blue beak yucca. Look how pretty. It's got, look how much it's grown. I know, it's beautiful. I have to see the old video, or the original video right, when so this was planted up. I'll link that video at the very end of this video. When we planted up Dawn's. This will eventually become a tree. Right. And all those leaves at the bottom are going to fold over and kind of make it look like bark. I think um, the deer probably doesn't like this since no. it's spiky. No. <laughs> and that's why I'm hoping because they see that they don't come. They haven't. They yeah, haven't. they haven't come over here. So this is the pot that it came out of. Gorgeous blue pot. A good size, but not for something that's been growing in there for three years. Yeah. And then Dawn, are, are you guess you're gonna put these uh yeah. these back in there? Yep. Yeah, love it. Yeah, because those are finally starting to pop again. Right. They, they looked really, really sad, and I'm like probably the last three or four weeks they've just jumped right back and are gorgeous. She's got this color in her front, and I'm gonna share with you because it is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it's just vibrant. It's beautiful, and then she's got some potting mix that she's gonna put back in there. Yeah. And she's got two two of these that are flanking on both sides over there yeah and then we planted this up too last year and i don't think i didn't look back here but i don't think the deer ate this at all overnight so I don't yeah i was telling dawn i was so upset that the deer got my stuff and so she came out here to look at hers yeah so these are my salvias right on the other side there those are popping up nicely yeah they're coming up out of the ground these are cat's pajamas on either right. ends. So her perennials are coming back up. And these are my sweet spires. Yep, sweet spire. I have one of those because she accidentally bought one <laughs> more than she was supposed to. Because somebody put that in my cart. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> nuh -uh, But I was happy to pay her for it. <laughs> and then the euonymus. Yes, gorgeous. Those were so pretty all winter because they that's what they look like all winter. Nice. And so if you're looking for something for winter interest that has variegated leaves, this is for you. Let, let me bring you up closer. Look at this. You guys, like even the stem has color. Oh my goodness. So she wants it to grow up above this fence line. Yeah, pretty much as tall as the fence is right. about what they should get. And that'll fill that in nicely. She's got four. And then this is my crepe myrtle. Black. Myrtle. Yeah, black, uh, which has hot, hot pink. Why no, no, red. red, red, vibrant red, vibrant flowers. red, gorgeous. Yes, um, against the black foliage. All right, so me and Dawn, she she really <laughs> wanted to go shopping today, yeah. not me. What are we looking for? 
um, some jasmine, but I have the summer and summer and snow, snow. and yep. I I saw some fire and red what red or sunset no? fire I think yeah. so they've got a so, red highlight on the leaf. I got to yep. get a couple of those. So every since we saw those, she's like, oh, I need I, I think I want some, and then she's like, we got to go back, and now I got to go back and get me another one of those arbors. Yep. So I hope they have it. If they don't have it, I can order it on Amazon because Amazon has the exact same thing. Oh, cool. But I'd like to get it today and Just build it because I am tired of these deer. Like, we got to beat these deer, don't we, Don? Yep. So far. You can't let them win. No, 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 no. no. I mean, so, anyways, they, there's plenty of trees around that they can go live in. Yeah. They don't need to come and eat Kim's house or I my know, house. I know, I know. So, anyways, we'll see you at Wilson's, guys. Yeah. We're on our way. So I want to share with you, if you're looking for a privacy fence, and this is something different that I do not have in my garden. I have in my garden the emerald green arbolates. These are called the green giants. Now these will get taller than the emerald green, and they're very similar, but these are going to get much taller, much wider, and they're going to give her more of a privacy. But isn't it pretty? And she's got a double row. So that's something you can think about too. So they're spaced apart nicely and they have a little bit of bronze to it. And this is normal for winter. If you see this bronze color right here. You can hear a plane in the background. We're, we just live so close to the airport. We just can't. Sometimes I turn my video on and off and it's aggravating. But anyways, we'll see you at the nursery. So look, I came over here in perfect timing. Did I add? Perfect, isn't it? Perfect timing. Tell me how perfect this looks. Well, I think it's got to go in the ground a little bit deeper because I think it's a little bit that's not what too, I want. That's not too, too, a little bit too elevated. So you want it about an inch to two inches above. Looks like two inches to come. Yeah, I think you get to go maybe another inch or two down. Another inch. Or you can that, you can break up the dirt ball a little bit too if you that's want. That's all good depending on how easy it comes out of there. <laughs> is it heavy? <laughs> is it heavy? She asks the silly question. It's heavy. <laughs> oh. That would be a guess. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, it's not too bad. How, how much do you really think want it weighs? To take it out of there again. Do you um, want my? Do you want my auger? This is what our red clay looks like. Yeah. So we're gonna mend it a little bit. We're definitely putting a bio, bio starter in there. Yeah, it's it's behind. Yeah. You it out. We've got some plant tone to fertilize with. Yeah, we have it all. So the reason why you do not want your plants in this clay soil to be at ground level is because this clay holds on to moisture and you definitely don't want to dig your hole and put nothing but potting soil back in because then you're going to create this bath and then you're going to get root rot and all your plants are going to die i learned the hard way so i know but anyways if you amend your soil you want to use 80 percent of this clay and you can amend it with some kind of compost i like my land and sea i like black cow Mushroom compost is really good, but you can amend it by mixing it. Or you can just use your biotone. There's a lot of good soil here from the prior planter. So it's already got a good start. It's already got a great root system. Just FYI, how to plant in our hard clay. I didn't realize I was gonna get like a really good video when I came over here, Ed. Lucky you. I know. It's one of those carefully asked for things. Yeah. So anyways, sorry for the person that wanted to see this removed from the pot. There you go. I like that much better. Can you move with that? Oh yeah. Right. That looks nice. So he's already put the biotone in there, which is a great root starter. That's why everything that we have in my garden and in this garden looks gorgeous. And then we're going to backfill it. I'm not. Ed's going to backfill it with this. He's throwing a couple of handfuls of plant tone in there. 
plant tone is a good overall fertilizer for anything. <laughs> Dawn's walking away because she says it's stinky. <laughs> I guess I'm used to it. It's just a good old farm smell. It does smell like a farm, I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Do you know I grew up on a farm, Ed? I kind of thought so. I learned <laughs> all this stuff somewhere. Did you have cows on the farm? My dad had a few cows. Actually, he bought like 20 little ones and they all had got something and they all died. Oh. Yeah, that was but I, mainly a hog farm. Okay. Which, thank God I didn't have to do anything with it. Hogs, I think, smell worse than cows. <laughs> oh, pigs, pigs smell bad. But the um, farm down below us, that was maybe, I don't know, maybe a mile away, they would spread manure and yeah. it would smell so bad. Yeah. That's probably how Al, my next door neighbor, is going to feel when I put all my plant tone, holly tone, and rose tone down. He's probably thinking, oh my gosh. When I spread all that fill on the yard and it had compost mixed in with it, <laughs> that was a big hit. Yeah. That was a big hit. But it only smells for a couple of days around here. Yeah. I, I like to usually plant it before it rains, but, and I was wanting to do it the other day, but it was so daggone cold. I was like, no, I'm not getting out in 40 degree weather and putting down fertilizer. Yeah, I got all my down a couple of weeks ago. I knew I was going out of town. I kind of figured it ain't going nowhere. Right. I'm put some water in there. So you can see that it's above the ground level, but not too deep. So I think that's going to be perfect. All right, me and Dawn need to get to the nursery. I lied. This is her summer snow. Summer and snow, right, Dawn? Yeah. Jasmine, this is what I have in my... Uh, you have it in baskets. In my baskets, yeah. Oh, uh, you turn off. Love the variation. He's over there watering the hole. Trying to get the air out. I, yep. I usually use my foot to do that, too. Yeah. Trying to squish it down. I will get to that. Don, what do you love? My bucket seat. Look yep. at this thing. Perfect height when you get the three and a half gallon bucket from oops, Ace Hardware. Ace Hardware. <laughs> I'll put that into the link if you guys are interested. I might have to get Don's butt up so I can show you guys what it looks like. <laughs> so what it is is just a little seat that just goes right on top of the bucket. Still has the, still has the uh, bucket stool cover, <laughs> and you can also put it on this way. Right, too. it uses as a lid. Yep. But it, it's, it's perfect. a perfect height. It also, oh, we don't have the five-gallon bucket. It fits on the five-gallon bucket, but that's too tall for me. Right. That's why I had to go get. I got both of us. Oh, here you go, a little closer. I don't know if you heard everything, but anyways, Don said that it just fits. Perfect. Yeah, and that you can just throw sense. it's yeah, and you can throw your weeds or buds yes. or whatever you got in there. Yeah, when I dead had the pansies and stuff like that. So I we're pulling up in there. Poa, poa grass, grass, I think. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I have a lot too, and it seems to grow in shady areas. And you know, it's growing right. It's easier to pull it right now because it's we had all that rain yesterday. Yeah. So this is really. Huggy. Yeah, so it's easier to pull weeds after a good rain. Yeah. FYI. Yeah. Especially out of this Bermuda. So here we are at Wilson's Nursery, and let's go see if they have my arbor. I already see one, so I know they have it. They're busy today. It's in the 70s. It feels great out here today. Busy, busy, busy. Yeah. And there's one arbor already put together, so we'll see if they have one in the box. Lots of camellias. Dom is really looking for the red one last time, and hers ended up being pink, but it said it was red. I don't know. Like I said, I think the, sometimes the soil changes it to a different color. That's the color I was expecting. Yeah. And this is, the, this is more the color I got. 
Yeah, uh, it's a little bit deeper. Yeah. Look how big that bloom is. I know. It's crazy. Yeah. Look at the I white. don't see the coral ones anymore. Never. I'm not ever going to plant one of those. You're never going to plant one of these? No. Okay. Because they're very poisonous to people and to Really? Yeah. Don says these are poisonous. Yeah, I know that. I almost, I almost got those. Huh. That's why I ended up with the blue beef yucca. Oh, okay. Oh. Those are, those are well, my fox gloves are poisonous to people and cats too. Look at that. Bleeding hearts are so pretty. These are a real early bloomer too, if you're looking for something. The pink's pretty. I've seen pink, white, and I've seen red. I think I've only seen the red ones. Rosemary. <laughs> it smell good, Dawn? At Creekside, yeah. You nice. smell it? Yeah. It smells so good though. What are these little purple things in here? Oh, they're cute. Oh, I have that. I have it's that in like my house. A, it's a house plant. I bought yeah. I just put that in my house. It's some kind of succulent family, I think. We have some pots all together here. Is it like a ground cover? Compact. Rosa Bacopa. Yeah. I gotta find out what that sun part shade. These pots are very cheery. Some super bells. I think they've got some dahlias in there. Look. Already bloomed out. I know, don't they look real cheery? Very cheerful. Cute ideas for yeah, for different pots. Yeah, I wonder if that would probably be good in my my blue pot if I chose to do just pots instead of. I've usually bought stuff like that more for like in the fall too. Yeah, but yeah, that would go from now to into the fall. And these is like this the Goldilocks rocks that they have at um the proven winners, but I'm sure this is a different brand. Yeah. Got the spikes with little super bells. Some coleus. Just make sure you don't put coleus out until after frost. It does not like to be cold. So we found the snow and summer jasmine right here. need to find the other version of it. Now yeah, what's that one? I think this is it. So it's a different color. I think that's it, but it doesn't have a tag. Is that one a tag on it? Dawn's found another variegated <laughs> plant. Anything variegated. Yeah, she oh, loves. Oh, what's this? Look, look how pretty. I like that one. I like all these. Oh, yeah. This one's really pretty. I don't know what that is. Looks like a house plant. Trade a, trade a can, trade a can. Oh, you're asking yeah. me to say it? Trade can Trade scant, scanta, scanta, scanta. I don't know. Trade pistachio, a scanta. Pistachio white. Look at how pretty that is. It's an annual. It's pretty though. It'd be pretty enough. I bet. I wonder if it takes shade. It just looks like something that would take shade. Sun depart shade. Okay. But in a container. Yeah, and they're your porch or whatever that's pretty I'm not building I'm not building pots today I am no. going over here to the okay summer we found it visit. over here we always get ourselves in trouble oh, we found it well you we can prune it back oh that's all it is 
It's a good price. Yeah, these are really small. I mean, they're well, tiny. Yeah. They're a smaller pot. Yeah. Let's look at the foliage up close. I love it though. Look at that. We'll grow with some fertilizer and <laughs> adds watering all the time. Yes. I guess you can ask them if they have some bigger ones potted up. I bet you that's what those that one stray one is over there. Yeah. It just didn't have a tag. Because when I got the summer snow and summer, they were the big pots. Were they? Yeah. yeah. And those are big pots, so yeah. that's why they're that's 40 bucks. Yeah. That's what I was expecting I was getting. So yeah. Maybe I'll just get a couple of these. Yeah. They'll grow. Some more bleeding hearts. Here's the white one. Oh, well, that's pretty. The white one's pretty, yeah. I could put the white one in my garden. That would look great. What do you think? Should I get this one? I think if there's pretty? only one there, I think you need it. Oh. Uh, I think I'm gonna go get a cart. Yeah. I think I'm gonna get this one, you guys. It's too pretty to pass up. I can put this in my cottage garden where it takes some partial shade. Look how pretty that is. Oh, love it. This one fell off. Get back up. This one's going home with me. How pretty this flowering tree is. Gorgeous. I can't wait for my Yoshio cherry tree to bloom. So before I buy this, I guess I better look at the plant. This is called Alba, comes back every year. Arching sprays of dainty pure white heart shaped flowers are born in late spring above fern like foliage. A lovely addition to a wonderland or cottage garden. There you go. To my cottage garden. That'll make a beautiful addition to my garden. Not a bad price. Beautiful. So instead of one big plant for $39.99, Dawn's going to get four for $9.99 and just plant two together. Two, so now yeah. I'm gonna just do two of these together. So yeah. Other two and two. But look, there's so many different colors on here on this plant. Look, this one too. So pretty. I'm excited and that'll yeah. accent my summer and snow. Right. Love it. Another little pop of color. Okay. Yeah. So what do we want? Just kind of give you an over look of what else they have here. Trees, shrubs, palms, because we're in South Carolina. Annuals all over yeah, the annuals, place. trees. Look at these blooms are really pretty. Some type of hydrangea. It's an early blooming yeah. hydrangea. I don't see a tag on No tag? No. And look at this. Kind of looks like a uh, bleeding heart, but it's just so different. What's that called? Pyrus Japonica. Pyrus? Pyrus? Pyrus. Pyrus. I don't know. Pyrus? Pyrus Japonica. It's pretty. Japonica. It grows. Gosh, look at that. Heart shade or shade. Isn't that beautiful? Like, if you really look at it. You know, it's like little Lily of the Valley flowers. Yeah. It really oh, pretty. It's pretty. It just Oh, no, these are last years. Look at yeah. how big this spur just got. I think this spur is so pretty. I actually really like it. Yeah, I do too. I like the best in one. Look at the flowers on it, too. That is cool. Love. Everybody needs a little water feature in their garden. I need to get mine going. Here's another arbor right here. Look at 
this standard fringe flower. So she doesn't have one in a box, so she's gonna take it apart for us. Yeah, so we're in Dawn's SUV, so I told her she could probably you know, leave this together and then have the arch. I think that'll work. And that way, Paul won't have as much to put together. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed won't have as much to plant. Yeah. Oh, wait, he has four to plant. Sorry, Ed. <laughs> Actually, me and you could do those if we wanted to. Those ferns are pretty. I can't she, wait to get my Yeah, you can't in. get them out until probably after April. Yeah. I will get I was just telling Donna I like this lamium. I was gonna have to put that somewhere. Where do you it takes part sun or shade. So I guess I'd have to put that in my about soil. cottage garden. <laughs> part perennial, part sun or shade. So yeah, you can't put that. But I think underneath my limelight well, hydrangeas, once they start blooming out, that's gonna be that will fill that row. That'd be pretty. Yeah, because they stay Remember, I was telling telling you about my head, knees, and toes, and yeah. I need to fill my toes more. These are only four to six inches. Right, so it's more like a ground cover. Yeah. I need some more of this. Not today, but... Oh, I guess it's a good summer. time to plant it right now, huh? It'd be a good time to plant. All right, you guys, I can just cheat and buy my rhinoculus and say that I growed it. <laughs> this is what the deer just ate. <gasps> Theirs look so pretty. Look. I don't know. I'm so disappointed. I don't know if I'm going to get anything. And I think I got some of that anemone there, too. Dawn coming okay. as a plant. Lots and lots and lots of marigolds. Probably you could plant them out right now. These are pretty too. These four leaf clover things. Look at the leaf on that. And that little dainty flower. Isn't that pretty? Oh, look how pretty that purple leaf yes. is. Ooh. They're all ground covers. want to show you guys this angel wings proven winners has a new angel wings that I'm going to put some of my containers this year like this is something that you just want to feel oh it feels like it's rubbery oh it's nice very nice it's more of a succulent I wonder if it comes back tender succulent full sun part shade can be a house plant for winter oh I love it in love with these pots right here and I got the deep blue too beautiful this would be a gorgeous planting because there's three different sizes look how cute those are love it so they have all the tones here holly tone of course are good for all your hollies and anything that are acid loving and you can see right here, camellias, hydrangeas, even though I use rose tongue, rose tongue for my hydrangeas. And then garden tone would be, you know, for your vegetables. I use holly tone for my hydrangeas. Do you? Mm -hmm. I don't think it matters. No. Rose tone, like I said, for anything flowering, I like to use the rose tone. If you can't find anything, you can always go with plant tone on everything. Plant tone's good for boxwoods and your emerald green arborvitaes. And they actually they do have they have a they have a I thought they had a tree tone. Let's see, yeah, they do. On coming down here, the tree tone's harder to find though. There's says it's for fruit and shade. Yeah. Biotone for planting, and then tree tone, flower tone, citrus tone, 
Yeah, if you have a lemon tree or orange tree, citrus tone's good. Oh, and this one's brand new. You have the chicken manure. I already use that. That'd be good just for your lawns. And as, like, as a compost, I would think. Gypsum, it's really good for breaking up soil. Flower tone, just, just in general, if you could have all kinds of annuals. I, I like to use my water soluble. I used iron tone on my... Yes. The one plant I planted. Polly's. No, I used it on the... Rose of Rose Sharon. Of Sharon. That was yeah. one of them that I planted was kind of yeah. sad looking. So if you have anything that looks more yellow than it should, turns yellow to green, iron tone. It works. It does work. Yep. Let's see what else they have. Fertilum. And they used to have, uh, oh, yeah, down here, they have the soil that I like, the Espoma soil. They don't have proven winter soil, but they do. I know I can always come here and find the Espoma organic potting soil. Let's see, right here. Potting mix. And then they have my compost that I like, the land and sea compost right here. So I'm going to get a couple bags of that today. I'm going to get a big bag, a couple big bags of this today. And then they have the potting mix too. Seed starter mix. All kinds of good stuff. And look at all their pots and containers and windmills in here. And just four screws. Four. <laughs> and I got away with one plant. I got four plants. She got four small ones. One plant, you guys, can you believe it? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, woohoo. <laughs> All right, see you back at Lowe's is the next stop. Yep. <laughs> all right, guys, day two. So all my shopping was yesterday. We went to Wilson's Nursery and I gave you a little tour of Wilson's Nursery, so I hope you enjoyed that. Dawn picked up her plants and I got my arbor that I wanted to get, the exact same one that I had from Hearth and Plow. And I'll link that description down below. But it is a real pretty day. It was real misty this morning. And guess what? My husband put up my temporary deer fence to hopefully keep the deer out. And I got my rhinoceroses all planted back in and I talked about fertilizer while I was at Wilson's Nursery. So I will link my old video from last year down into the end screen of this video. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe my videos. And if you want to know more information about fertilizing everything in your garden, make sure you watch the video at the very end of the screen. And I went over all this Spoma products and different products that they had and which ones I used on my plants. So like I said, if you can't find anything and you can find plant tone, grab you some plant tone. <laughs> and I'll have all the descriptions of the plant tone through Amazon if you don't wanna go shopping and you just wanna have it delivered to your house. Amazon will be very glad to deliver it to you. <laughs> so I am going to share my fence with you. Look, can you guys even see? Would you even notice that there's a fence back there? I don't even really see like in my camera. It's not obvious, but it's there. So let's go look. Like I said, I think today I'm going to go ahead and put my plant tone down on these emerald green abravates. And for these hydrangeas, I'm going to put down rose tone. You can totally put down holly tone, plant tone. Anything is going to love it. Just make sure you fertilize because that's when you're going to like get that lushness and they're going to get that food that they need for the start and through the year because, you know, they take a lot of nutrients out of that ground right there. So even if you want to top dress it with some uh, compost, the land and sea or any kind of like just really good compost, you can go ahead and just top dress all your plants. And then I just like pretty much take my hand and just throw the fertilizer down with like a cup or something. It is a little smelly, 
not going to lie to you, but that's what I'm going to do today. And like I said, I'm not going to video it. Everybody responded. Do you see all the bugs around my camera? I got like lots of gnats. But anyways, I can hear the airplane too. What was I going to say? Like, I'm not going to go ahead and describe all this again. I pretty much told you, but that everybody said that that video was great and that I described it more than anybody else has. So go ahead and at the end of the screen, make sure you watch that video. I'll link it to the end screen. This is what the garden's looking like right now. I'm going to be so excited to share my March garden tour with you because I got, like I said, tulips coming up. All my perennials are coming up. Look, I even have some geranium coming up. I'm a hardy geranium. Miss Grace, I was gonna tell you hi. All right, so look. So there is my arbor that I bought yesterday. And oh my gosh, these gnats, you guys, are terrible. What is going on? And can you see the fence? You cannot see the fence, right? So I hope that it will deter the deer hopefully but we needed a way to get out on the other side so like i said i got an arbor that has a little gate that you can just open the door maybe open the door <laughs> wow i'm gonna have to get paul to work on that one it's tight <laughs> maybe it just needs a little oil I'd like to get like a magnet to where this would hold here, like a magnet here and here it would be nice. But I like this arbor. It's really sturdy. It's very attractive. It's made out of metal. And then do you see the wire right here? That goes from here. And then we did have permission from my neighbor over there to uh, tie off onto his fence right here. Now this may be temporary. We're gonna see if this works and distract them. And I've got three levels. I got one kind of like at my chest level here, one at my knee level, and then another one lower level. That way if you have any fawns or something, like they're gonna hit that and it will hopefully hold them back. Try to get it as tight as we could without breaking it. This is a 30 pound fishing line, is what this is. I'll try to find the link to that if you're interested. 30 pounds, and we just tied it off. And then of course we use the arbor as our gate. And then I have a little bit of room to like work from this to over here from our property line. So like I said, yeah, I need to battle these weeds down here. But like I said, you can already see like all the damage. So hopefully they'll come right here and they'll hit this and they probably won't get as far as that. That yellow stuff right there is ant, ant killer. This one didn't have very many ants that I could see, but the other bed, my savanna bed, when I was digging around in that, there was tons and tons of ants. Oh my goodness, you all. Look at the squirrel. He's like not a bit scared of me. Where is he? Do you see him? Look, he's just up there having a snack. I'm not even like six feet away from him. He doesn't care. He's in my little box there. I know the fence aren't going to keep the squirrels out but anyways they they have not bothered anything because I do feed them and they're very happy very very happy that I feed them and like I said this is the other raised bed and then I did reach around in there and try to fix these up as much as I can I have no idea if I'm gonna get flowers out of these we'll see I have I hope that I do but you know they look pretty pitiful pretty pathetic and like I said I had lots and lots of ants in here so I put some ant bait in that one and then I come around here on the corner so I use these 
like these smaller ones right here kind of as an in-between and then on the corners I use more of a sturdy one and I found these at Ace Hardware right here more of a sturdy one I would have bought more of those if I could find them but I just could not find more so then coming along this is my neighbor's house right here and then you can see all along I carried it up not all the way but I'm hoping that they will not come all the way up here but I know that they have so I think they'll come across they usually kind of cross right in here let me see they usually cross like right in this area somewhere around in here but they have been way up there too which is heartbreaking to me but I've worked so hard and, and I really don't th want them to eat my first flush of new foliage off my roses at the beginning of the year either or my hydrangeas so coming on up here they don't bother the junipers they do like my daylilies they haven't seemed to bother the daffodils but you can see like right in here there's a daylily and they have already cut that all the way back for me. And then this Rose of Sharon, I think they, they did bother that a little bit, but they really liked this hydrangea right here. That's the pufferfish hydrangea. So hopefully they'll hit, you know, this wire right here or this one and then stop. And because they're not going to see it and they're going to be like, what is in my face so I'll let you guys know if it works so if it works it might be a simple solution that you might like and then I stopped it here if um, they come up in this area then I'm gonna have to probably carry it on through the rest but I hate to do that because you know I got all this garden down here and then this west side garden that's brand new too look do you see those tulips get it even more without going over there but yeah I love that variety of tulips gorgeous all right hyacinths are doing good and they smell wonderful they have a pretty good little strong scent to them all the little daffs are doing good that's that silly blend I was telling you about you can tell where I planted them in drifts I don't want to give too much of my garden away because I want to have a really nice March garden tour. If you've not watched my February garden tour, please go and watch that. I'll link that one as well. So I'll do my uh, February garden tour and I will do my fertilizing too. Video from last year. I've got lots of videos you guys last year that I did a lot of teaching my very first year of YouTube so if you want to go back and binge watch some of those you are so welcome to and I would so appreciate it all right guys that is the end of this video for today and I hope that these this deer fencing fishing line <laughs> temporary fence is going to keep the deer out I so like you guys just Pray for me because I don't want all my stuff to be eaten because that's what I do is I want to show you guys blooms. Like, look at these tulips back here. I do not want them to be eating this kind of snack. They need to be eating corn or all this really nice grass that's in front of me, right? So anyways, I hope you thought this video was inspirational and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.